going, YouTube? Slender Revolution X here, uh, coming to you guys with a little bit of food for thought today. Uh, and what I wanted to talk about is based on the fact that our U.S. national is about two weeks away. And what I wanted to put out there was uh, a little idea I had about how running a rogue deck might work out to be most advantageous for you guys. Um, first, I think what you have to do before talking about this is break down the current meta. Uh, speed is the name of the game in this format, if you ask me. Uh, decks that are successful are successful for a reason. I think that it is because decks uh, build advantage very quickly and maintain control of the game, which can swing momentum in their favor for the match. Uh, now, going into Nationals, uh, I think it's very well known that the top three decks are number one Dragons, number two Prophecy, and number three Evil Swarm. I think an Evil Swarm is put at number three because it has such a great matchup between Prophecy and Dragons. For Prophecy, you can easily main deck Eradicator Epidemic Virus. And against Dragons, Ophion is a card. So, I mean, this deck is literally the ultimate anti-meta meta deck. That's even a thing. Um, but what I'm saying is, is this is general knowledge. People know that these are the top three decks. People are going to be preparing for these three decks. Um, which means, in my opinion, it could work out to your best advantage to play a deck that people aren't prepared for. Side decking is a thing in the game. Um, you could have the most amazing main deck, but if you do not know how to side, you will not be a successful player. Um, and cards that are usually side it, are, are generally widely sided for the top decks. For dragons, you have Imperial Iron Maul. Um, it pretty much shuts that deck down. For prophecies, you got Drone Lockbird and Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Um, for Evil Swarms, you're looking at Shadow Imprisoning Mirrors, thing, things of that nature. Um, it's very widely ran and very widely known. Now, that being said, it's very hard to side and prepare for a deck that you're not expecting to play. Given the fact that running a rogue deck doesn't always necessarily... I mean, it does not It does not mean that you have to run a terrible deck. And I think there's a common misconception there that rogue decks are equal terrible decks. Um, now, that being said, I think I want to dive into a few... That you know, I could point out that be that you know you could see at the top tables in nationals, the top tables of regionals that happen very often. Um, one of which is Dark World. Uh, I think Dark World could be a very successful deck at nationals due to the fact that it can main deck three Eradicator Epidemic viruses, and it can instantly have a three thousand beater on the field at all times. Um, Eradicator Epidemic virus instantly shuts down Prophecy. If you can't stop that card in Prophecy, you're you're done. It's game over. I mean, you, odds are you're hitting three, four, maybe even five cards in your hand if you get if you get virus. So, I think Dark World is a very viable rogue deck. Um, now, last format, if you would have told me that Dark World is a rogue deck, I probably would have laughed in your face. But times have changed. It's a new day. It's a new format. So, I'm um, you you have to adapt to those things. Um, another deck that I think is very viable as a rogue deck is Heroes. Um, and a lot of that is due to the consistency of heroes. Heroes can OTK, they recruit cards very well, they can control a game, they have a very well, very good stun aspect to them, and it's a lot. You can do a lot with that deck. Um, another reason I think heroes is a good one is the f fact that Super Poly is a card. Uh, the ability to scoop up your opponent's monsters and create one of your own, a bigger one, um, is very advantageous to the game. It can create a lot of advantage, you know. So I think heroes who, I mean, are always basically tier one, but, I, I mean, with the decks today, it's either you're running them or you're not. You're running top decks or you're not, and I don't think you consider heroes a top deck right now. Um, another deck I wanted to talk to you guys about was Gravekeepers. Um, for the simple fact that Royal Tribute is a card, getting Royal Tribute at first turn is terrible against, I mean, when you get Royal Tribute, it's terrible in any day. Um, and two, the fact that they can run Necro Valley. I mean, it's their key card. Uh, Necro Valley, it shuts down a lot of the decks today. I mean, you look at not being able to touch a graveyard, that's why those Kaiku Prophecy decks are so good. I mean, being able to protect that Kaiku is a big thing, and being able to have a recruitable Kaiku, essentially, I mean, Necro Valley can be recruitable by Gravekeeper's... Mm, what is it, the, the Commandant? And Terraforming, I mean, you'd be able to have that almost every turn, turn one. Um, and it gives you guys a boost. So, I mean, I think... Gravekeepers is a very viable deck, especially also not even, you know, mentioning the fact that you can throw Malefics in there. Uh, having a nearly indestructible Necro Valley by having Stardust Dragon, or Malefic Stardust Dragon, is, I mean, very advantageous. A lot of decks can't come back from that, so I think they, they are very, very viable as a rogue deck that you could maybe see at the top table at Nationals or Worlds, or, you know, a lot of different places. Um, and the last deck I wanted to talk about was Tech Genius, or TG's. 
um, strictly for the idea that they're very consistent. Um, being able to always have a monster in your hand is awesome. Also, being able to run the drains, you know, skill drain, mind drain, soul drain, um, is very advantageous in the day to game in the game today. I mean, mind mind drain Rex dragons. Not be. I mean, being able to sit there with a handful of seven star monsters that you can't summon <laughs> is very advantageous. I mean, that that basically locks them down. Um, and skill drain locks down what's on the field. And I mean, when you can run Barbaroses and uh, Horn of the Phantom Beast, I mean, you're literally just constantly creating a bad advantage in that deck. Um, another card I wanted to talk about in there is TG1 EM1. I mean, being a, it's a chainable big guy, which is pretty awesome to be able to have. I mean, if I was running that deck, I'd probably run three of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those, those are just a few guys. I mean, there's a lot of decks out there that create a lot of advantage. And, you know, I, I know I'm talking about advantage a lot. But I think that when you're running a rogue deck, that needs to be your number one priority. I mean, I'd consider Heretics a rogue deck right now. But I don't think that they're very viable because they can't create advantage. Um, if you do not OTK, granted, creating advantage, I guess you could consider having a field full of monsters. But if you do not OTK... You can't recover from that. In Hieratics, when you go all out, you're literally going all out. You exhaust all of your resources for that. So I don't think that that is a very viable uh, rogue deck. I mean, I'm sure people disagree, but this is just my opinion, and I'll get on your thoughts later if you guys would like. Um, so yeah, basically, what I'm trying to put out there to you guys is that there are a lot of decks out there. And when you're thinking about what to go to nationals, what to go to locals, what to go to worlds with, I mean, even a friendly tournament... Um, please, think outside the box. I mean, there is a huge, huge um, pool of archetypes, cards. I mean, there's so many cards in this game today. Um, I inspire I ins want to inspire some people to think outside the box and go out there and do something different. Because I think it's something that you can go out and you can be very successful with. So, um, please, like, comment, subscribe, guys. Subscribe to join the revolution today. Um, other than that, I'm done here. If you guys, please, give me your thoughts on everything. Uh, comments are greatly loved. I mean, I will listen to you guys day in and day out. But other than that, I will see you guys later. This is Slender Revolution X signing out.